Sometimes it can feel too overwhelming or let's be honest, nearly impossible to get a cleaning routine going. But if you look at the broad task and then break it down into small bits and organize it, it feels approachable and most importantly, it feels doable and repeatable. So in this video, we are gonna break down those daily, weekly and monthly tasks so that you can finally put a cleaning calendar together. And if you're someone who loves sales and you love Makers Clean, which is our sister company that sells premium microfiber cleaning tools and more, I've got good news for you. We currently are running our warehouse sale. We have incredible specials. So you can visit makersclean.com. I've got a link for you down below as well that you can click on, check it out, load up your cart, get the sale. And for anything else, I wanna let you know, anything that's regular priced, you can use the coupon code YouTube10 to save 10% off regularly priced items. I want to acknowledge that everyone's home and everyone's needs and everyone's life circumstances are different. So it's hard to take a one size fits all approach to creating a cleaning schedule for everyone. That's why when we look at the daily, weekly and monthly tasks, it gives you the opportunity to plug and play and personalize the schedule for what makes the most sense for you, your family, your life circumstances, etc. So let's start with looking at things we need to do on a daily basis. The things that you wanna focus on are what build up the most, where a mess can accumulate quickest and where things can go from zero to 100 very quickly. So tasks like the floors, cleaning the floors, putting things away, dealing with your kitchen counter, your bathroom counter, the dishwasher, or the buildup of dishes, cleaning up after preparing a meal, and even daily laundry. Those little things that start to build up and irritate and agitate and pretty much build clutter and mess at home, that's the stuff that we need to tackle on a daily basis. So if you can stop for a moment and just kind of think through what an average day in your home is like, where there tends to be those clutter bottlenecks or those mess bottlenecks, make a list. Those should be the things that you prioritize and focus on on a daily basis. And if you want a taste of that, you can see the videos that we just did on creating a morning and an evening routine because those incorporate all of the daily tasks that we do at home. And I think that most people would need to do in some capacity. Now, if you're hearing this daily stuff and you're feeling a sense of dread and you're like, oh my God, I have to add all this cleaning into my day. I am right there with you. I don't like cleaning. I don't wanna spend one extra minute cleaning. But I will say this, I find living in a messy home to be slightly more upsetting than having to do the cleaning myself. So. In knowing that, what I have managed to do instead of adding cleaning into my daily routine is I've just found ways to weave it into my day. So that way I don't have to think too much about it. And because these tasks are just rote at this point, it's not like, oh my God, I gotta make extra time to do this. It's sort of like, oh, I'm in my bedroom and I gotta go that way to the kitchen because our laundry room is just off the kitchen. Fine, I just grab a, a basket of laundry and I bring it with me, throw in a Tide Pod, throw my laundry in, set it, and then get on with my day. It like adds an extra minute, but it allows me to get that task done. In the morning, while my daughter is sitting and eating her breakfast, I will use that time to unload the dishwasher and put anything else that's accumulated over the evening after we ran it through. I mean, it's just these little things that you can add into your daily routine so that it doesn't feel like it's extra or feel like you have to make extra space for it. It's just kind of going within the flow of your day. Now, the weekly and monthly tasks, yes, you do have to build that in, but the daily stuff should eventually feel pretty natural. Now, putting your weekly and monthly cleaning tasks, and I should say monthly and beyond, because some jobs you only need to do a couple times a year, um, it's going to require a little bit more planning. So this comes down to the kind of person you are. Are you someone who likes to put things into an online calendar? That would be me. Are you someone who has a journal and you write things down or like a day planner and you write things down? If that's you, then great. If you have like a big calendar on the wall where you kind of write what's going on with the family and you want to add cleaning tasks there, or if you just keep a spreadsheet, like you find the system that works for you. I'm not going to prescribe something. You've just got to find what makes sense for you. Then 
You're going to take your weekly tasks. And in fact, I should mention that I did a whole chapter on this in my book, which I will link for you down below as well, where it goes into comprehensive detail and lists out like tons and tons of tasks that you can pick and choose from to create your daily, weekly and monthly routine. So yeah, check out the book if you haven't. What you'll do is you'll, again, you'll think about your home, you'll think about the flow, how frequently spaces get used, and then how often you need to clean those spaces so that you feel good in your home. There's no like, Melissa Maker says I have to clean my dining room every two weeks, so I need to clean it every two weeks. I don't know how often you have to clean your dining room. Like we never eat in our dining room, obviously. So we don't clean it that often. But if we didn't have a sit down area in the kitchen and we only ate in the dining room, you better believe we'd be cleaning that every day. Because I have a cleaning company, I would often talk to customers and we would decide what cadence worked best for them, whether it was weekly or biweekly. And the clients who were able to sort of upkeep between their visits tended to prefer bi-weekly visits every other week. Whereas the clients who just said, I don't want to do anything, those were the people that were the best candidates for weekly cleaning. So also think about how dedicated you are to your daily tasks. If you're less dedicated, you're going to have to clean heavy duty more often, which means a weekly clean would make sense for you. But if you're someone who's really good about doing those in-between cleans, you can very likely stretch it to bi-weekly. So some of the things that you will want to do on a weekly or bi-weekly basis would be a deep clean of your kitchen. So that would be appliance fronts, cabinet fronts, you know, any tasks related to deep cleaning your floor, cleaning your upholstery, giving your furniture in that space a good cleaning, emptying garbage, cleaning out the garbage bins if they're kind of stinky or have drips on them, looking through your appliances and making sure that there's nothing that has to be dealt with like stuff at the bottom of your dishwasher or crust in your fridge. When it comes to the bathroom, you would want to give your toilet, your shower, your tub a good cleaning, mop the floors, give the counters, the sinks, the mirror cleaning, etc. So you're kind of doing your heavy duty cleans there. This is a good time that you would be laundering your bedroom sheets and your towels. You would also do any dusting around the house and any major floor cleaning. So vacuuming of those wide open spaces, mopping your floors, et cetera. If you wanna get really technical about it, you can think about how long these tasks would take you approximately. Humans aren't always the best at gauging things. So the next time you attempt that job, you might just wanna time yourself so you know approximately, it takes me 30 minutes to clean my bathroom. So I have to block off 30 minutes to get that job done. And then that way you can really get serious about your scheduling and you'll know, okay, I need about three hours once a week to deep clean my home and I'm gonna do tasks A through F that time. Then we've got the monthly plus category and you can dial this up or dial this down as much or as little as you want. Cleaning is a choose your own adventure situation. No one can tell you how clean your home has to be. That comes strictly from you. So if you love cleaning, you really value a clean space and you want to spend time just loving on your home, there are plenty of things you can do. A few examples of a cleaning task you might want to do on a monthly basis would be cleaning inside your windows. I have a little girl, she's constantly putting her hands everywhere. We have lots of windows in the house. So cleaning those windows on a monthly basis, I mean, I find it to be a very annoying job, but it makes a difference, so it's worth doing. What about laundering throw blankets? Yeah, those things get a lot of cat hair built up on them and food stains. So laundering those once a month, that makes sense as well. If you have window coverings, you might want to do that monthly. What about your ceiling corners? Those get a lot of cobwebs. That's something to focus on on a monthly basis as well. Maybe giving your upholstery a deep cleaning, cleaning out your front hallway closet, and giving your kitchen appliances a good cleaning. So cleaning out your dishwasher, self-cleaning your oven, and cleaning out your fridge. Cleaning, deep cleaning your carpets and upholstery. Another thing you can do quarterly is rotate your mattresses. You can also check your light bulbs. Honestly, I could go on and on and on. There are so many things you could do. On a twice annual basis, you can look at changing over your closet, whether it's a front hallway closet with jackets and snow pants and changing that out to lighter stuff, or your actual bedroom closet with a wardrobe for spring, summer versus fall, winter. 
you can consider giving your window treatments as well as any upholstery or carpet a deep cleaning using a steam cleaner. This might be a time where you wanna clean your walls or clean your chandeliers. There are plenty of tasks that you can do on a biannual basis, things that you really don't wanna think about cleaning but should be done once or twice a year. And setting up these longer term cleaning tasks really comes down to knowing your home and knowing the contents of your home and how they need to be maintained. You know, you might not have to do much if you rent a home and the floors are old hardwood, what do you care about the floors? But if you recently installed brand new marble flooring, that's a whole other ball game. And by the way, over on cleanmyspace.com, which is our website, we have tons of printables and eBooks and online courses. Some of them are free and they cover a lot of this stuff. So I would invite you to go over there and check that out and see what you can glean. If you've made it this far in the video, I wanna say thank you because I know not everyone watches to the end, but you did and I appreciate that. So I wish you a lot of luck on your journey, getting through and setting up your schedule. And I'd love to know in the comments down below, what is a stumbling block for you and how can I help? So let me know and I will see what I can do. If you want even more ideas on how to set up routines, you can check out this video over here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.